Hello, I'm Ben Bowling, a Professor of Criminology and Criminal Justice at King's College London. I spent the last 30 years studying the police in England and Wales, in the USA, Canada and the Caribbean, focusing specifically on the role of the police in society and the relationship between the state and citizen more generally. One of the most controversial questions that I've been looking at in recent years is should the police have the power to stop and search people in public places? So I'm the kind of professor who believes that research shouldn't end with your last book or article, that it's important to use research to try and improve policy and practice. So over the last 15 years, I've been working here with the police in Scotland Yard to try and help them to make their stop and search practice better, to try and to make the use of police powers fairer, more effective and more accountable to the community that it serves. Every year in England and Wales, five and a half million people are stopped in their cars. Nearly two and a half million people are stopped and questioned on the street. And over a million people are stopped and searched in public places. Under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, a police officer can stop and search somebody where they have reasonable suspicion that they're in possession of a weapon or drugs or stolen goods. The problem is that reasonable suspicion is defined so broadly that nine out of ten people stopped and searched are innocent of any crime. And if you look at Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act, only four out of every thousand people stopped are in possession of a knife, which was the original intention of the power to catch people with knives. When stop and search is used unnecessarily and unfairly, it's not just a waste of police time and public money. It's not only irritating to the person who's been stopped and sometimes humiliating and embarrassing, but it can also drain away confidence and trust in the police. And in extreme cases, the unfair use of stop and search powers can trigger riots like those in the summer of 2011, which saw communities across England and Wales in flames. One of the most controversial questions that I've been looking at is whether the police use racial profiling to decide who they're going to stop and search. And the statistics show that people of Asian origin are more than twice as likely to be stopped and searched and black people more than seven times as likely to be stopped and searched by comparison with their white counterparts. All the evidence suggests that at least part of the explanation for that is police stereotyping and the use of racial profiling to decide who to stop and search. So the challenge for academics, for the police and for government is to try and find ways to enable the police to effectively investigate crime, to contribute to community safety without undermining fundamental human rights and civil liberties. Community safety, liberty, justice. These are public goods that are important to every individual and to wider society. I think that carrying out research on the police power to stop and search people in public places and engaging with the police and with government and with young people and the community is a way to contribute to making our society safer, fairer and freer.